Happy fall, y'all. It's officially the first day of fall and the holiday seasons are upon us. And what better way to satisfy your hungry guests than with some delicious apple julep and apple fritters. The two recipes that we're making today are based off of recipes from the Apple Barn in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I know some of you may have tried them at the Apple Barn and now you can try them at home for yourself. Making the apple julep and apple fritters has become kind of a tradition with me and one of the families in my church back home. I think we've made them for the past two years. Hopefully I'll get to go home soon for a visit to continue the tradition. The apple julep is a drink and it contains pineapple juice, apple juice, lemon juice, and orange juice. So we're just gonna combine all of those ingredients in a pitcher. Start with a cup of pineapple juice, four cups of apple juice, a fourth a cup of lemon juice, and a cup of orange juice. Give that a quick stir and then just set it in the fridge to chill until we're ready to eat our apple fritters. Now that the apple julep is in the refrigerator chilling, we can move on to our apple fritters. For this recipe, you're gonna need an egg that's slightly beaten, butter, salt, sugar, baking powder, one orange juiced and the zest from that orange, a Granny Smith apple. You wanna use a Granny Smith apple because they hold their shape better than any other apple variety when you're doing baking or cooking. Vanilla and cake flour. When I was growing up, we had this game where when you had an apple, you could twist the stem and every turn was a letter. And whatever letter the stem fell out on was the first letter of your true love's name. <laughs> now we're gonna give it a try. So, A, B, C, D. Daniel. <laughs> Dante. Dante. Damon. Derek. Derek. I like the name Derek. If there are any Dereks watching, hit us up. <laughs> Ignore her. We have another guest on the show. The main difference between cake flour and a traditional all-purpose flour that you might have in your cabinet is the protein percentage in each flour. Your regular all-purpose flour is going to have about 11% protein and the cake flour has about 6% protein. And the protein that I'm talking about is the gluten. And the more gluten you have in the flour, the more dense your product is going to be in the end. So if you're using bread flour, it has even more gluten in it and so you get the chewy bread texture. For the apple fritters, we want them to end up being very delicate and soft when we bite into the center with like a crunchy outside. So that's why we're using the cake flour instead of the regular all-purpose. A lot of times people cut their apple from the top to the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it from side to side. And when I do that, we're gonna see a star on the inside. How cool is that? You do wanna go ahead and peel the apple the apple fritters only fry for a couple of minutes, so you want to make sure your apple pieces are diced very small so they can get cooked in the just a couple of minutes that they're in the oil. I'm going to zest the orange now. You don't have to use the zest of the orange if you don't have a zester, but it will add a little bit of color to the finished product, and it will add even more of a little orange taste to it because there's lots of oil in the rinds and it will infuse into the batter and give it a nice orange taste. Apples chopped, oranges squeezed, now we can get on with our frittering. We're gonna combine all of our wet ingredients in one bowl and all of the dry ingredients in another bowl. So that includes the egg, butter, apples, orange juice, orange peel, and vanilla. I don't measure my vanilla, I literally just pour some in the bowl. It doesn't make that much of a difference. We'll go ahead and give that a stir and move on to the dry ingredients. 
When you use cake flour, you do want to go ahead and sift it because it has a tendency to clump together more than all purpose. When I sift my ingredients, I always like to put one layer of flour, then blend in the baking soda, salt, and sugar, and then add the rest of the flour on top of that so it can sift together better. I don't have a deep fryer or anything like that, but I've just heated up some oil on the stove. It's about 350 degrees. You don't want it much hotter than that or they'll possibly burn. Now I'm just going to add the flour to the wet ingredients and stir that until it's combined. Now we're going to fry up our fritters. <laughs> the easiest way to scoop the batter into the oil is by using an actual scoop because it drops into the oil easier with less chance of burning you. You want to use about a tablespoon of batter per fritter because they're going to puff up quite a bit. You want to make sure these cook for about three and a half to four minutes to ensure that the center is completely cooked. You could do a test fritter and just fry that one fritter and count like three and a half minutes. See if that's done. If it needs more time, your next ones can be four minutes and that way you don't mess up like 10 different fritters. While them fritters are frying, you want to go ahead and line a plate or anything with a paper towel so you can put the fritters on that to soak up a little bit of the grease. After the fritters have set for a couple seconds on that paper towel, you want to go ahead and just sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on them. And we're finishing up our fritters with a little dusting of powdered sugar. For today's taste testing, we have a new visitor. Say hi, Brooke. Hello, people of YouTube. And of course, her regular taste tester, which is her roomie, which is me. Thank you very much. Miss Hannah. The Apple Barn serves their apple fritters with some apple butter. I wish I was at home right now because I could get some homemade apple butter from my friends, but we have great values. Apple julep. Apple julep. And for me. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. That's pretty refreshing. I like it. Yeah. What do you think? I really like it. My taste buds are shouting heavily because it's got some of the Glad you guys enjoyed it. Okay, now for the fritters. This is like the main part. I'm so excited. <laughs> you want to go ahead and grab your fritter? Like, yes. Are you going for the one on top? <laughs> That's okay. The I'll... one with the most powdered yeah. sugar. <laughs> I will I will go for this one right here. Okay. It smells like fall. Oh yeah, it does. Perfect for the fall time. Yeah. Oh, oh, my my God. God. <laughs> Hannah. It's really satisfying. Mm-hmm. It's like an apple-y funnel cake, but better because it's bite-sized. I really love the crunchy texture, but the delicate, soft inside. Mm -hmm. And you can still taste like little pieces of the apple. You can get a little bit of a crunch from that. It's mm -hmm. delicious. So we're gonna go eat more fritters. Yes. <laughs> and take it to a couple of people on campus to see if they would like to enjoy fritters as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week. Woo! Bye! Bye! Bye. What is you? <laughs> Julep is apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, and lemon juice. So you just got apple with a bunch of juices? <laughs> yeah, I like it, I'm in. Okay, now. <laughs> what are these apple fritters? Apple fritters. Alright, an apple butter? Yeah. That's good. Oregano. Mmm. That's really good. It's good. It's good. 
Good job, Rachel. It's